I decided I was ready to start looking for some companionship, some friendship, some somebody to hold hands with, you know. In the army, I was in mil military intelligence. I am not a stupid person. I felt literally sick to my stomach. The guy I've fallen in love with is not the guy I've fallen in love with. There is a secret crime that many individuals across the United States don't talk about. Every single day in America, hardworking, trusting, and honest people lose thousands of dollars totaling up to $143 million a year. Welcome to Scandal. Today we're going to speak to a retired military intelligence officer named Leah, who's from Douglas, Wyoming. She was talking to a man who claimed he was living in South Africa. She met him on OkCupid and he ended up duping her out of $25,000 using another man's pictures after her husband sadly passed away from cancer. We appreciate all the support so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and let's get into it. My name is Leah Peterson. I was married to my husband Paul who was an active duty service member. He passed away while on active duty from cancer about two and a half years ago. In around January this year, I decided I was ready to start looking for some companionship, some friendship, some somebody to hold hands with, you know. So the only thing I could figure out is go online to a dating site. I ended up on OkCupid and uh, that started the whole fun time. From the time like you met this person, McMillan, how long did it take for him to start asking you for money? And then what was kind of the backstory that led to that? He got out supposedly to the Gulf of Mexico. He was, you know, working there. The internet didn't work really well there. That's why we had to use Hangout. He was almost done with his five weeks out there, but they ran out of supplies. And since it was his contract, he was the one that had to buy the supplies, but he couldn't access his bank to pay for it. So he asked if I would access his bank account. I did. He gave me the information. I went there and it said he had a $3 million balance in his bank account, which was like, oh, guess he's good for it. And so he had me pay like, 82 or 92 percent of the original bill i shipped that out i'd also been shipping out emails for him to this company that exists but the emails were going somewhere else it was a whole fraudulent setup i was getting emails back with supplies needed so i sent the first batch of money and then like a day or two later they said okay we have your order complete you just need the final amount so i went back on his bank account and it was said it was stopped for fraudulent activity we had to wait for it to be shipped from China to New Me or to Mexico, to a port in Mexico. And I had received emails that I forwarded to him from the transit company that would have like updates on where the shipment is. And when it got to Mexico, suddenly I need to pay, oh, port fees and taxes and customs. And that's when I shut it down. And he was saying, oh, well, we need to get this, you know, this taken care of so we can get it done. I said, well, why don't you ask your mom? I'm sure you've taken good care of her. She can probably send you some money. And he sent me this fake notice a day or two later that, from a bank that said that she had sent X amount of dollars, but I, he still didn't need more. So at this point, I was really, I, I knew something was wrong. I was like, you know, babe, if you can just cover this for me, I can get home sooner. I'll pay you right back. Everything's going to be great. And I fell for it. And I, I uh, drained my bank accounts for that first amount of money. So he had actually given you like some bank account details. You logged on, so you log on into a legitimate bank account. You see his name, you see the, the dollar amount, and you're like, oh, this guy's legit. Like he's telling me the real story. Like yeah. why, why, would you, yeah. why would you doubt that? Because you logged in yourself and saw it. We would video chat with only me showing video. He would keep his video off. But I know that first amount, I think, was 7500 in total. I had had a couple of different bank accounts because I just moved. But I, it took all the money I had. I also knew that he, he kind of doubled down on the romance. It was really like, babe, as soon as I get done with this, we're going gonna, gonna to come home, we're going to get married, we're going to travel the world, I'm going to retire, I'm done with this, I'm tired of this. It ended up being a total of $25,000 I lost to him. So, in the, the thing that hurts the most is when my husband passed on active duty 
um, I as a widow received uh, a monetary gratuity that uh, it's meant to last me for my life. And I had put that money into investments and I called my investment advisor and had him send me the money. You're probably like super nervous and, and you know anxious about this whole situation. Once you finally got those results, like what was going through your mind, especially looking at his, his wife? I felt literally sick to my stomach. The guy I fallen in love with is not the guy I fallen in love with. At that point, my heart broke. My stomach, I was sick. I, I knew it was all a lie because I couldn't deal with talking to him or trying to do anything else at that point. There are going to be people that say, hey, like how, how foolish is she? Like, what do you have to say to like those people? In the Army, I was in mil military intelligence. I am not a stupid person. Um, I actually, when I was talking to people online more recently, um, and occasionally I would share that I've been scammed, one gentleman said, oh, I can see those guys a mile away. How the heck did you fall for that? And I told him, don't you dare judge. You have no idea what happened. You have no idea until it happens to you. And the fact that you judge me is your problem. And I didn't talk to him anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I researched every single fact he gave me. He sent me a copy of his contract from BP. I, I looked it over, didn't look it over hard enough. Our search specialist, Linny, ran an in-depth on Macmillan and found that none of the emails that he used to communicate with Leah were attached to anyone's name and all of the phone numbers he used were a fake number and could not be traced to anyone's address. The website that was used to track the packages was a fake website with no advertising or any reviews. And the contracts that were sent to Leah by Macmillan had a lot of grammatical errors and misuse of punctuations and capitalization. The contracts also had fuzzy letters and mixed colors and fonts. The real man's name in the photos is Tony, who is actually happily married living in Georgia. So I went silent for a while and then I texted him and... <laughs> I threw in a bunch of Bible quotes about how evil it is to try and hurt a widow. And uh, they, whoever was texting was like, what are you saying? Oh, you must be, you must be sick or, or going crazy from lack of sleep or something. And I was like, no, I know you guys are BS artists. And, uh, but I never, I never called him because that voice is the voice I fell in love with. That, that voice would have triggered too much, I think. And I didn't need to put myself through that. Sure. What are your feelings about people, like scam in general? Like now that you know what really happens, that there's, you know, they steal these people's images and then they, they contact hundreds of people. What's like, how do you feel about these people? At this point, I think there's a very special place in hell for all of them because they try to justify it in different ways from what I've seen on documentaries and that, that, oh, oh, we're poor and you're not. Well, go find a job, you know, go do something right. You're, you're doing evil. Um, I had no idea it was such a huge industry. I had no idea there was so much money involved, billions and billions of dollars. The more I research into this, the, the more disgusted I am with it. I wish there were more steps we could take, but as technology improves, their technology improves and it's harder and harder to, to find them. I, I think it gets easier. Like I've talked to a lot of people in your situation, it gets easier, you know, as time goes on and, and you build more of those relationships that like are necessity for everybody to have, you know? Right. Um, you know, I definitely don't envy your, your situation, but I, but I definitely respect you and, and I really truly appreciate you for taking the time and 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 like helping educate other people that are in your same situation. And this happens to a lot of people. Like I've been doing this for a long time. We get millions of people a month that come to us, you know, a month. And, you know, I've talked to thousands of people. Um, I think most of the people don't report this, you know? So like, I think for you to go report this is great. And like you said, a lot of it is like just paperwork. But at the same time, you know, it leaves like a paper trail just in case there's other people involved, you know, because there could be people right. in the States or, or the banks might be, you know, held accountable to some extent, you know, depending on, you know, what's happened or hasn't happened. So um, we also recommend that you report it. Uh, sometimes it seems, it seems like a lost cause, but we've heard people getting calls like a year later, two years later, 
you know, from the FBI. Well, I, I appreciate the feedback. And um, again, I appreciate you, you taking the time to, to be on and tell your story. All right. Have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you very much. Bye. Leah is now back on the online dating scene and she started running 5K every other day. She's lost 20 pounds and has a much better outlook on life. She quoted, It's not a good thing that it happened, but I challenge anyone who has gone through something like this to not let it break you. Let it make you stronger.